Hi YouTube, hope you're doing well. Today I want to show off Shine Raymon for EX4. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite decks. I'm always a fan of the Raymon Ogmon cards, and Shine Raymon does fall in line with that, which is really cool. In EX4, it has some new tools to play with. It is not tier 1 yet. That's next set. But for now, it's a solid fun deck if you want to you know, take it to a fun tournament and have a good time with it. Like the video, subscribe. So that page will smash potatoes, that way you know when all these amazing digital videos go live. I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, as Shine Greymon still isn't complete to the point where it will be in BT13, the deck needs a little bit of extra draw power, a little bit of extra consistency. So for BT5 Koromon when attacking, draw a card. Gets the job done for sure. I don't really like the yellow Koromon, I don't think it does enough. Plus we are playing a red rookie that only evolves on a red baby, as you'll see shortly. So having the Koromon just helps with consistency overall. I really like that egg. I like it a lot. All right, this deck is gas. We're playing four copies of the new Agumon. The one that started your main phase, if you have one day, like a Tamer, you gain memory, which is really good. And a heritable for Tamer, suspended draw card. That is very, very strong. And we'll get to that in the, we'll get to that further in a little bit here. But yeah, just gas, just gas. Then we have uh, four copies of Agumon, the BT12 one that searches top four for a Greymon card and a Marcus. And a heritable minus 1000 DP. Uh, is not too bad. It adds up in this deck. You might be able to kill some things, obviously. And then our last rookie is four Agumon X. Part of the reason why we play the four Koromon. Because you might need to evolve it on your Koromon. You might just have to do that. But on player evolving, you reveal top three of the Greymon card. There's no Omnimon. There's no Exante Body. None of that fun stuff. But anyway, 12 rookies, consistency is key here. We don't really need to do anything else. Uh, next up for champions now. Geo Greymon, the new one from X4, four of it, it has the exact same effect as the Agumon. So obviously what gets really cool is if you have one of these, uh, if you have the stack, if you if you have a level five on top of it, right? If a tamer gets suspended, you draw two cards. That's like Pot of Greed. For those of you that don't know, Pot of Greed lets you draw two cards from your deck. Pot of Greed's really good. There's a reason why it's banned in Yu-Gi-Oh, and having this stack just lets you pot of greed, which is pretty insane. Uh, not to mention, if you attack with it, you also draw a card. So, like, that's three draws potentially in one turn for one tower. That's pretty crazy. Uh, the memory effect comes up sometimes, you know, same with the Agumon, you might promote it. This is the start of main phase, you get a memory. That's fine, that's cool, but uh, it's really there for the draw power. Of course, we're playing uh, four BT12 Geo Grey, the one from uh, that one that plays the Marcus for free if you don't have one. And the 2000 DP Inheritable is cool as well. We do play one random other champion here, is one Greymon X Antibody. We play one of it because it is actually the cheapest way to evolve into your ultimates in the deck. Uh, basically, you know, you can evolve into your Rise Greymons for two. Uh, that's very, very good. You can't do that with these Geo Greymons. So Greymon X is super valuable in my opinion. It's just a one of... You're not going to get any protection from it because you don't play X Antibody, but the reduced cost is really, really strong. Now for ultimates, it's very, very consistent. Uh, the, the, the dream of this deck is consistency. There's a lot of four of them in this deck, and for very good reason. And this is one of them. The G, the Rise Grey, the one that when you evolve, you gain memory back, assuming that you uh, gain a, have a Tamer on the field. So it costs three on a Geo Grey. It costs two on Greymon X. So that's why we play the Greymon X. Either way, you gain memory back, so it's effectively a two-cost evolution, or even a one-cost evolution, which is pretty cool. Then all turns, same with the Inheritable, once per turn. If your Tamer dies, you put your Tamer top of security. So it lets you retrieve Marcus's back if they die to security or whatever. Uh, then we play four copies of Rise Greymon X. Uh, we, the, the Rise Greymon in EX4 is not a good card, in my opinion. There's no reason to run that card, in my opinion. Uh, this might change in BT13 and get a new Rise Greymon, but for now, four Rise Grey X gets the job done. It does play a Tamer when you evolve it, which is valuable in itself. And if you evolve it on the Rise Grey, you do get to do 2,000 damage or something for every Tamer you have, which is pretty strong. And then our level 6s, we play four copies of Shine Greymon. It gives your Marcus's plus security and plus 3,000 DP. In addition to that, when you evolve, you weaken your opponent's security and weaken one Dedrimon on their side of the field by 3,000 for every Tamer you have. So that can make for a very powerful Marcus swing all of a sudden. And uh, that's it for level 6s. Again, just consistency, just gas. We're not trying to get cute. We're not trying to play things like Shine Greymon BT2 or War Greymon BT4 or anything like that. It's just consistency. It is just gas. Now, the next two cards we play are the Final Digital on the deck. They are two copies of Shine Greymon Rune Mode. We do know what this card does. It evolves on deletion, minus 5,000, everything. Global effect, anything that comes into play gets affected by it. And then end of attack, uh, it deletes itself. You recover 
and you hatch an egg and you pop something. Card is broken. I think the card's a little bit more of a win more card in this deck, but I can't deny that in testing it actually has come up a couple times. So for now, it's good. Will it remain in BT13? Uh, I don't think so, but who knows? The future is still very far away. All right, that's it for Digimon on the Tamers. Obviously for the big bad man, Marcus himself. To start a main phase ability, he pay memory turn into Digimon. If you control Agumon or Greymon, is very good. And then when he's suspended, or when you attack with it, basically, you get to evolve one of your cards into a Greymon card for free, which gets ridiculous. And yeah, it does work on Shiger and Runewood, which is really, really cool too. But uh, yeah, Marcus is the most broken card in the deck. It's crazy. Now we're playing two of this. Two Tai and Kari. If you guys noticed, we're not playing any more of the BT12 Red Black Agumon stuff, the stuff that synergizes with Tai. We're not doing it anymore, so we reduced our number of this to two. Two is the absolute minimum, though, in my opinion, because it is still Red Yellow Tamer that's really good and gets you memory return, as long as someone's at three or less security, if not both players. And the suspend to just weaken security 2,000 is really cool. It comes up if you don't have Marcus on the field, right? If you don't have any other Tamer on the field, uh, then you can suspend this with your, like, Agumon Geogre stack from EX4 and draw cards. You can do that. So it is a very valuable card, in my opinion. We're still playing the one of Marcus for the Memory Tamer and suspend when you attack with a Greymon card to gain memory. And we switched the tie up, Memory Tamer tie. We don't play that card anymore because we're not playing the tie Agu support. So we're playing one copy of TK instead. Uh, a memory, memory Tamer is fine, but being able to rummage through your security and add a missing piece to your hand has won me games and testing in this format so far. Card is super valuable. Um, I think it's really good. Another one of it's fine. Usually you grab one missing piece and it's more than enough. And you check your security out, you make sure everything's looking okay. And uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say about TK. Card's really good. Now we have seven cards left in the deck. Uh, four red memory boost. All of our Digimon, except for Shine Greymon Ruin Mode, are red. All of them are. Uh, that doesn't matter with Ruin Mode though, because Ruin Mode isn't a combo enabler. He's like an end game finisher, win more card, whatever. So red boost actually adds to your hand your combo pieces which are important. Uh, also gives you two memory later, which actually does come up in this deck. You need the memory sometimes. So I'm very happy to play four of that. One copy of Sunrise Buster. Uh, it's limited, so we play one copy of it. Playing Tamer's Deep Reduction is broken. And two copies of Crimson Blaze to wrap up the deck profile. It deletes everything 6,000 DP or less, costs one for every Digimon they have, and floodgates your opponent to where they can't play Digimon by card effects. So the card's really good, and you can do little chip DP reduction with your cards so that Crimson Blaze can actually kill bigger things. It can wipe boards. It's a very good card. And that's for the deck profile. That's it. All right, that'll do it. That's Shine Greymon. Uh, a lot of fun to play. A lot of fun to build. Give it a try before BT13, because you'll want to definitely know how the deck works before then. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. What do you guys think about it? Let me know. I'll see you.